Hey, in this video I will show you some of my projects related to the Internet of Things, soldering, electronics and programming. I will start with the simplest and about halfway through the video we will go into more advanced projects. To create the first project on our list I used a simple ballpoint pen with a transparent body and so-called fairy lights, in my case they are blue. This wire with LEDs is very small and can be powered by low voltage, which was perfect for placing it inside a pen. To power it I used a very small lithium battery placed at the end of the pen, which can be charged via an USB phone charger plugged to the small charging module next to it. Switching on, off and changing modes is possible thanks to the small button on the side of the body. This pen can be used for example to write in the dark, as light indicator at night or in emergency situations. It also automatically turns off if you hook it into a pocket of your cloth. At night it kinda looks like a lightsaber. In a pile of my electronics I found a 12 volt light bulb that you normally find in a car. I was interested to power it using my 12 volt lithium battery and control its brightness with a slide potentiometer. The GPIO pins of this microcontroller work with 3.3 volts and the voltage of my battery can just fry it. So I connected the battery to the PWM controller, which was controlled by 3.3 volt analog output of the microcontroller. Here I get 3.3 volts from potentiometer. So with 3.3 volts I can control from 0 to 12 volts that goes from the battery. So if I turn it on, you can see I can control the brightness. Move slider to the right, it goes brighter like really bright. I also built a custom laser pointer using a laser module and a 3D printed body I designed in Blender. After soldering everything and assembling the components I had a more powerful and customizable laser than most store-bought ones. I experimented with a 3.7 volt vacuum pump. Connected to a sealed container, it can either reduce pressure or increase it depending on how it's attached. It's a fun and useful module for physics experiments or DIY vacuum systems. Now we'll make a mood setter decoration. This RGB LED lamp is made of 16 by 16 matrix of individually controllable LEDs placed in a custom cylindrical case. And controlled by a very small ESP32 Super Mini, which hosts its own Wi-Fi access point. Using a browser-based interface you can wirelessly control the brightness and animation modes. Rubber Ducky is a hacking tool that is familiar to cybersecurity experts. The price of that flash drive reaches $100. But I found something with similar functionality, but cheaper and sometimes even more convenient. For example, this ESP32 C3 Super Mini board, for which I wrote a GitHub gist that has some information and a tutorial for easy start. And the other one is a Raspberry Pi 2040 microcontroller. By writing a special Python code and inserting such a flash drive into computer, you can for example in 15 seconds get all the data stored in the system, like user's personal information, passwords from internet accounts, online wallets or banking information. That's why you should never connect some random USB sticks in your PC. The advantage of such a device is the ability to connect to the internet. By leaving such a small flash drive in the computer, hackers will be able to remotely run custom scripts. I used my version of this tool to make the mouse pointer randomly move on the screen or to run recrawl videos. Two buttons are programmable and with the switch you can select the mode of operation. I also played around with a cheap yellow display that is popular among enthusiasts. It's a 2.8 inches TFT LCD with an Ely 9341 driver, powered by an ESP32. I've been running multiple cold samples on it to try touchscreen based interfaces. 
By printing the case for it and equipping it with a battery, you get a smart tool with quite a lot of functionality and possibilities, due to possible expansion models and full customization by programming it the way you like. Applications could be a pocket hacking device, for example by installing Maradur, which is a suite of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, offensive and defensive tools for ESP32. Or it could become a screen that displays real-time stock prices. Or a home assistant module with ESP home firmware. Next up, a 2.4 inch display with ST7789 driver connected to an ESP32 and multiple sensors temperature, pressure, humidity, and motion. Every second, the ESP32 sends sensor data to my Python Anywhere server. The API responds with live graphs generated by Matplotlib, providing real time environmental monitoring. This is an Adafruit Pi Gamer, which is basically a handheld console that lets you to program your own games. So, I've made a platformer game where the goal is to jump higher and not to fall down. The game gets more difficult over time, dynamically changing colors as you progress. It also has score tracking, coins and some power-ups to make it more fun. make it more fun. Speaking of fun, I've also built a radio-controlled airplane. For this I took a styrofoam drawing model airplane, reinforced it with carbon rods and mesh fiber tape. As a brain of it goes the Matic F411 VTE flight controller, which sends signals to the electronic speed controller, that sends signals over three wires to the sunny sky motor, which spins the 6x4 inch plates. MG90S servers control pitch and roll axes. Baitian BN220 GPS model helps it orient itself in space. And LED indicators make the plane visible in the evening. I actually almost lost the plane during one of the flights. So right after that I've put a VFly buzzer and tracker. This plane has an autopilot for return to home or waypoint missions, but it doesn't fully fly by itself, so I control it with Radio Master Pocket Controller, which uses the Express LRS protocol to communicate with plane over large distances. We can also get back telemetry with some data, like plane position, speed, altitude, and battery charge in real time. But then I thought, why not build my own controller? T-Display ESP32 became its core as it has a dual-core microprocessor, few inbuilt buttons and a small RGB screen. I decided to add a dual-axis joystick and a rechargeable 3.7V battery. It's all housed in a custom-made 3D printed white PLA enclosure. After all, it fits comfortable in the hand and is quite capable for controlling cars, robots, planes or other smart devices. Now. Here is a peek at my workspace. I use an 80W soldering iron with adjustable temperature. And to prevent it from burning my table, I put two 20 by 30 cm silicon mats next to each other, which are resistant to high temperatures and are easily washable. I also have a set of heat shrink tubing of different sizes and colors to insulate wires. And a handy multimeter for testing circuits and diagnosing issues. Thank you for watching! This was a rundown of some things I've made in the past. I still have many ideas and already working on more advanced projects. So stay tuned!